Hi guys, it's Jared here from Rogue Archery with coaching case study number two. Now, first of all, I just want to say a huge thank you to the community out there. I've had an amazing response from coaching case study number one. Um, I've had amazing feedback from that. Clearly, some people out there uh, have learned a thing or two from that video because I've been getting amazing questions and feedback. So, um, you, thank you so much for that. Now, if you haven't checked out that video, please pause, stop this video and go back and find coaching case study number one. In that video, we went through with a fresh archer named Josh. We broke down the, the first seven steps of our shot process, which focuses on the technique structure, okay? We go through the stance, posture, setup, raise, pre-draw, loading, anchor, okay? And these are fundamentals. So uh, go back and if, you, if you've already seen that, it's always a good thing to go back and refresh on. So. Um, first of all, I would say if you haven't already, go back and check that video out. Now in today's video, we have session number two with Josh. So I've filmed this one as a follow-up to coaching case study number one. And uh, this week we check in with Josh, see how his progress has been going. Um, he's been doing really, really well with his practice during the week. And so in today's session, we tidy up a few of the things that he needs to work on. In particular, we talk about head position, we talk about anchor, okay, we talk about uh, the front hand position a little bit and we also talk about setting the front shoulder in a little bit of extra detail So this is really up a follow-up from session number one um, We also talk in this video about what the next stages are and how to progress from here um, You know, obviously we're doing a lot of work on the training bow at the moment and um, a very relevant question that might have crossed your mind is what next? You know, am I stuck on this pipe bow for the next six months? Well, the good news is no, and stay posted. We're certainly going to be going through that. Um, if you enjoy this video and you're getting a lot out of it, make sure you like and subscribe, and I hope to see you on the range. So we're now in week two, is that right? You've been working on uh, your drills with the, with the pipe bow, with the training bow. That's been going really, really well. Um, you've been learning the shot process. You've learned, we've been focusing on the first seven steps of the shot process. Stance, posture, set up, raise, pre-draw, load, anchor. Okay, so far looking really, really good. Um, now what I want to do today is obviously check in on that. I want to see your progress. Um, we've just had done a bit of a screen of your technique to see where, what the things are we need to work on. Um, one of the main things that I want to work on today is making sure we reinforce the setting of the front shoulder, making sure that's properly set down and we'll continue to work on the internal rotation of that front arm. Um, that does take some work and it will improve over time, but we need to keep up that flexibility drill. And the other thing I want to work on is just tidying up your anchor a little bit. Sorry. Anchor, tidying up the anchor. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So, um, yeah, let's get into it. So, first of all, we'll, we'll bowl over the easy thing first with the anchor position, um, because we've already touched on this a little bit. Now, one of the things about the anchor is that we've talked about um, making sure that the head position is correct. Yes, because if your chin is down too much, it actually affects the jawline. Yeah. Make sense? Yes. So when you look at the target, if your chin is too low, you'll have a tendency to kind of come up too high on the, on the face rather than getting down underneath more because you won't be able to get a good line of connection with the top of the hand and the jawline. Make sense? So. What we need to work on, in your case in particular, is making sure that we lift that chin up just a touch, just from here to here, okay? That actually has a huge impact because 
it changes the jawline. So instead of being here, by lifting the chin, now you can get a straight line like this, where the hand can follow and get good connection along the whole top of the hand and along the whole jawline. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. The other thing is you're you're pulling back a little bit too far and you're kind of I'm exaggerating, but you're a little bit too high and the strings on the side of the nose. We want to get it deeper underneath the chin. Yeah. Like this. And just make sure it's just touching on the center of the nose. Yeah. Okay? So that should be a pretty easy fix. We'll just lift the chin and bring the anchor in closer. Make sense? Yes. Okay, so we'll look at that first. And then what we're gonna do with the anchor, when you bring it in deeper, okay? When I say deeper, it doesn't mean further back. When I say deeper, it means deeper in, kind of in towards the neck. Make sense? Now, it'd be very tempting when I say deeper just to pull the hand in. Right? Yeah, that was, that was yes, funny. exactly. But you lead with the elbow, as always. The elbow leads, the hand follows. Okay, so as you come into anchor, and you draw the elbow around, see how my hand comes deeper, kind of in towards my neck, and it should have a really strong connection with the neck in terms of the thumb being really pressed in there. Make sense? Yes. So it just as a reinforcement, we have gone over this before, but with the anchor, you've got three reference points. You've got the main one, yep. the top along the hand, along the jawline, string, tip of the nose, and you've got, when your hand sits like this, you've got that part of the thumb, okay? And when you turn your head, this muscle protrudes, mm -hmm. and you get a nice little pocket here, yep. where it sits, right? So the thumb is very deep into the neck. Make sense? So that way you've got a really strong connection with the jaw, the hand, the thumb, the string, and that way it's always going to be very, very consistent. Make sense? Yes. All right, let's give that a go. So go into your raised position. Okay, now pre-draw. Boom, good. Now from here, this is where I want you to make sure your head's in the correct position, just there. See, it's not a big movement, right? But it changes your jawline. Now, set the shoulder, load. Anchor with the elbow around. Ah, now see, all we've done is change, corrected your head position and the anchor has already fixed itself. I know what I was doing wrong. Yes. I was trying to like touch the jawline with my thumb rather than my index finger. Second finger. Okay, yeah. Okay, so you had the wrong reference point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. That's a good one. Yeah, so, okay, no, sorry, just let me uh, interject again. So start yeah. with the straight front arm. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Now, look at the target. Boom. Now is where you set your head position. So, here, like this. Okay? Now, what we do is when you through the whole draw, mm -hmm. you look at the target. Don't look at me. Okay? <laughs> All right. Yeah, looking at the target. Now, yep. this is your correct head position. Now, from here, the head position doesn't move until the shot is finished and the arrow is in the target. Yeah. Make sense? Right. So, keep the focus on the target. You raise. Pre-draw, shoulder alignment. Good. Okay. Load. Elbow around and up into anchor. Boom. Okay, we've nailed it. Now, the string is still just a touch to the side of the nose. So we can bring the ankle a little bit forward. There. Happy with that? And to get it deeper into the neck, you bring the elbow around. And your alignment is bang on. Okay. This is good. This is good. This is really deep. Hold that for a second. Get the feeling right. Does that feel good? Okay, let down. String on the tip of the nose, hand along the jawline. Very good. Elbow up. Good. Now, load. Elbow up into anchor. Chin up a little bit higher. See how it's on the side of the nose? There we go. And that's better. Now, when you lifted your chin up, you lost your posture, so that's okay. Yeah. It's very close, it's just it's much better. Okay, we're good. Elbow around a little bit. Yes. Well done. 
Okay, can I give you the next thing to work on? Yeah, of course. Very good. Okay, so I want to talk about your front hand mm -hmm. position. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> now, in terms of the front hand position, um, we talked about in our first session that you want the fingers nice and relaxed. Okay? Now, you've got quite a good front hand position, but you've got too much tension in the front hand. Are you with me? Yeah. Okay. So, when you set up, uh, like we went through on week one, okay, you have the pressure point, mm -hmm. that meaty bit of the thumb, where the two bones in the hand intersect. Yeah. That is the pressure point. It's a good way to find it. It's in the center of the grip. You've got that. That's looking good. Your knuckles, 45 degrees to the, um, to the riser. If they're too far out, okay, you've lost the pressure point. Mm -hmm. If it's too far in, then you're applying pressure with this palm of the hand. Okay. Now, if you look at the hand, and I know this isn't a proper bow and we don't have a proper grip on it, but the point is the same. Yeah. Right? If I, if I kind of open my hand up and I'll show it to the camera. So if you want to come around here so you can see. So if I just get my fingers out of the way, the grip will come through here. Yeah. You'll notice that no part of the hand over the lifeline, mm -hmm. you know the lifeline? Through the, here, no part of the hand over that side actually touches the grip at all. Okay. So it's very common with beginners where they uh, they feel weak in the hand, and so they'll put too much they'll put too much hand into it like this, mm -hmm. you know, and they'll get this heel of the grip. Oh, sorry, the, the heel of the hand, of the palm into the grip too much, yeah. and that creates a talking force. Okay. So the correct one, if you have knuckles 45 degrees, that's a good indication, like this. And then also the grip should be running through here, not through there. I see. Makes sense? Yeah. Now, the other thing is, sometimes with beginners, they, um, they have it too far out on the thumb. And if you find that when you're shooting, your wrist feels very weak and it's kind of rotating out like this, okay, that means that you haven't got enough hand into the grip and that your, your pressure point is actually too far on this side. Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. Because the pressure of the bow pulling back is kind of turning your wrist. So you need to make sure that pressure point is properly set. Now, with you, hand position's okay, but you're doing this, you're white knuckling that sucker. You're squeezing it, okay? So well, this is very important later because any tension in the hand, okay, other than directly into the bow, is gonna induce inconsistency in the shot. Now, you might be able to get away with it at 20 meters on a big face as a beginner, okay? But we're training you for 70 meters, okay? And you yeah. gotta be able to shoot tens. Sure. So any little consist inconsistency like that is going to get in your way. Okay. So we need to make sure that right from the start, it's fully relaxed. If I have to, I'll get some local anesthetic, and we'll just we'll just make it sure it's, it's properly relaxed. Okay. Okay. So when you're setting up, if I come along, I'm going to touch your fingers. Uh -huh. Okay. Just to make sure that they're loose. loose. Yeah. Okay. And this is why we use a finger sling. Make sense? Okay, so knuckles should be soft, not like that. Okay. Um, now, the other thing to keep in mind when, when setting up the front hand is that we're not, um, you see, I'll come along and I'll often check people's fingers are relaxed, mm -hmm. okay? But then um, the psychology will get the better of you and when you start aiming at a target, okay, you'll want to steady the bow. Right? Uh, but because I'm very fussy and I'm strict on your front fingers, you'll get that right, but what you'll start to do is kind of squeeze the bow this way. Mm -hmm. Alright? Okay. Now, you, again, this hasn't come out yet, but I, this is one of the things that always pops up subconsciously. Yep. That you'll, you won't tense your fingers, but you'll stabilize the bow by squeezing your, this knuckle into mm -hmm. your thumb like that. Okay. So we need to make sure that's not happening either, because that will also create inconsistency into the grip. Okay. All right, yep. so there's a lot to all these little bits and pieces. Okay, so we're working on the front hand. So what you want to do when you set up, it's, it's in the setup, yep. okay? Like we've been working on, if you have tension in the setup, um, when you get to full draw, there's no chance that you're going to be able to relax it under the full weight of the bow. Mm -hmm. So, in the setup position, okay, go ahead. First you set the hook, okay? This is good, you've got a little bit of tension on the string. And now you position your hand into the grip and you push from the pressure point into the grip and this is where you keep those fingers relaxed. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Now, so that right now, now see how I'm feeling the fingers? Mm -hmm. And they're soft. Okay, keep the tension here on the string just a little bit to keep the hand set into the grip. Now look at the target, set your head position, set your posture. Okay? 
our raise, keeping that little bit of tension on, good. Now, we keep this soft as we go through the full shot. Elbow up. Yep, now go into pre-draw. Still soft, good. Okay, get shoulder alignment. Load. Chin up. Into anchor. And full elbow alignment as well. Well done. This is looking good. This is good. And the fingers are soft. Well done. Nailed it. Good, nice and relaxed. Fingers soft, good. Uh, so in preparation, should I look at the target with my right eye only, or? Yes, okay, so it's a very interesting question. Yeah. Um, now when, um, you're shooting right-handed. Yes. Which means that when you uh, are shooting, you need to be aiming with your right eye. Mm -hmm. Now, um, if you're an easy case, if you have a right eye dominance, then um, that'll be very easy because you'll shoot with both eyes open. Yeah. Now it's always preferable to shoot with both eyes open because that gives you balance and depth of perception. Okay. Makes sense? Yeah. Some people also have a hard time clo closing one eye. So some people have no problem and they can just close one eye and it doesn't really affect the muscles on their face. Some people yeah. physically can't close one eye and so okay. they really struggle with that. Yeah. Um, now, if I'm working with you and you're say a beginner and you have an eye dominance issue, so you're right-handed, but you're left-eye dominant. Okay. Right? This happens in maybe 10% of people. I didn't know there's a dominant eye. Yes, you'll have a dominant eye. Okay. You've got glasses, so you should know this. We can do a no, test in a second. No, never. Yeah. We'll, we'll do a test in a second. Yeah. But, um, so if you're right-handed yes. and right-eye dominant, it's easy. Shoot with both eyes open, uh -huh. look at the target. Your right eye will be the stronger one. Okay. It will naturally be uh, the one that's aiming with the target. Yeah. You're an easy case if that's you. Okay. All right? If you're right-handed and left eye dominant, mm -hmm. okay, then um, you have a couple of options. First of all, it's not black and white. Um, some people say you should always shoot with your eye dominance, mm -hmm. and some people say you should always shoot with your hand dominance. The debate rages on, okay? okay. I don't actually think you can have a cookie cutter approach to that, yeah. because people are different. Yeah. For example, um, some people, like their eye dominance is very close. You know, it's almost, uh, equal dominance and so what happens is th these people will typically have problems when they're looking at the target but sometimes their mind will jump between eyes and their sight pin will perceptively move okay okay this yeah. is a problem some people have um, if that's the case then sometimes all we need to do is just train the person to 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 no, know yeah, to draining yeah. with the left eye yeah. or sorry with the right eye assuming you're right-handed okay. so um, let's say that's the case yeah sometimes when they're learning as a beginner mm -hmm. all they'll need to do is when they're starting to aim yeah okay they'll just wink the left eye and all that will do is train the brain for the right eye to take over okay, okay? and yeah. after quite a few repetitions during practice that'll become natural the brain will learn the neural pathway will be reinforced yep. and that will just become natural they won't have to wink any longer okay so that's an easy case as well yes the problem becomes when it's more of a stronger dominance Okay, so um, if your left eye is really strong and it's just no matter what it's taking over, then um, you have a couple of options. First of all, if you are somewhat ambidextrous, then you can shoot, learn to shoot left-handed. Make sense? Yes. Now, I'm not saying this is you, but just in principle. Yeah, yeah of course. So if, um, um, yeah, so, you know, if you're somewhat ambidextrous, you can learn to shoot left-handed. You can train your handedness. You can't really train your eye dominance mm -hmm. if it's that uh, defined. The problem comes, like I was saying, mm -hmm. with um, if you're uh, left eye dominant, but you're right-handed. Some some people are really like um, uh, about as coordinated as Bambi on ice when they swap. Yeah. Okay. And so they have a really hard time kind of doing it ambidextrously. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. So if that's the case, then um, what we need to do is kind of work with your eye dominance. Mm -hmm. So in that case, what we would do is, you have two options. You can either close your left eye, okay? And some people have no problem with this. They just bang it closed and everything's fine. Mm -hmm. Other people really can't close their left eye. Either just the muscles in the face don't know how to do it or it kind of puts too much tension in the face. And so you'll see like quite a few archers actually shoot with uh, an eye patch or like, a, like a, something to obstruct then their dominant eye so that the other one can take over. Mm -hmm. 
Does that make sense? No, I've never seen that, but I've seen like archers shoot with one eye closed, with one eye closed. Yes, yeah. you'll see that if you watch um, actually quite a few top archers. Mm -hmm. Some of them you'll notice if you watch again, they'll have actually a little shade mm -hmm. on their um, like on their hat or their cap or something that will flick down or flick up yeah. when they shoot. If you watch enough top archers, you'll see people do this. Um, and that's for that reason. Okay. So it doesn't have to be an impediment. It's not a problem. We just work with you individually to figure out what's best for you. Yeah. So um, I guess to cut a long story short, the solution is if possible, we shoot with both eyes open. Yeah. Gives you balance and depth perception. Yeah. If you're right eye dominant, right handed, easy, case closed, both eyes open. Yeah. Um, if you uh, have a crossover in eye dominance, then we screen your coordinatedness with the ambidextrous or we work with your eye dominance to kind of block that off. Cool. Make sense? Yes. So let's do a quick test mm -hmm. on your eye dominance so yeah. that you know for sure. Mm -hmm. It's super easy to do. Yeah. And then we'll move on. Okay. Sound good? Yeah. All right. So what I want you to do, okay, so um, you're going to take your hands and you're going to put them together like this so you have actually a gap. Mm -hmm. between your thumbs like so I'll just do it so the camera can see like that okay so just a small gap mm -hmm. then look at the distance you may as well pick the target down there now what you want to do is you're going to look at that thing both eyes open mm -hmm. if you shoot with your glasses on do it with your glasses on that's better okay now now it's very important just put them down for a second I just want to explain so you look at the target both eyes open mm -hmm. and you keep your focus on the target lift it up and look through that gap whilst keeping the focus on the target. At no point in this exercise should you close an eye. Okay. okay? So don't come up and then look through it and then close one eye or the other because that will manipulate the test and you'll get a false result. Yep. Okay? Both eyes open through the whole test. Raise it up, look through that gap. Now keep the target in focus the whole time and slowly bring the hand in. And what you'll find is if you keep eye? the target in focus, it'll come to your dominant eye. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. All right, so let's do it. Keep it in focus and slowly bring your hands in. Boom, there you go. Your right eye dominant. Perfect. You're an easy to change. Yeah. So how long it takes to get to the fancy stuff, the shooting arrows and buying your equipment? Yeah, how long it takes to get to the fancy stuff, shooting arrows and yeah, okay. Very good question. Okay, everyone asked this before long. <laughs> um, okay, so it's it's like I said to you before, yeah. I think we, you know, we, we take a big step back to work on the pipe bows. Yeah. Okay. And then build up from the ground up. Yes. You know, and um, in some ways you can't rush these things, but obviously people's patience has some, somewhat of a limit from my experience. Yeah. Um, no, I'm still now, fine. I'm still no, you're, you're, no you've, you're motivated. You're one of the few people that, you know, you've come to me, you've asked for this help, you're, you're committed to the cause yeah. and you see like the long-term benefit. So you're willing to put in the work at the start. You mm. know what I mean? You're installing the plumbing in your house. Okay. <laughs> Good for you. Um, now, I think not to cop out on that answer, but I think it's not a question of time. Yeah. I think it's a function more of uh, intensity right. of the work that you put in. Mm -hmm. If you just picked up one of these once a week and just did it for five minutes, you'd never get there. You know what I mean? You could do it for six months, 12 months, six years, 12 years, uh, you'd make no progress. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Um, however, if you were working on your drills that I'm giving you every day, mm -hmm. and you're diligent with your, your training program, yeah. and you know, if I give you a 20 minutes morning and night uh, tech drills and SPT drills, and if you're doing them diligently every day or, or five days a week or whatever I give you, then what you'll find is that your progress will be very rapid. Okay, now, you've already made rapid progress. You know, I'm going to show you the video of you before you learn anything, yep. shooting, and I'm going to show you the video of you now, even okay. just with a pipe bow, yep. you'll be amazed at the difference in just one week. That's yep. one week of actual training, okay? So, okay, to give you an indication, I think, if you've spent the first um, eight to 12 weeks mm -hmm. focusing with the majority focus on the technique structure mm -hmm. in terms of the tech draws, the pre-tech draws and the SPT with the training bow and then over that time we would be building up the weight, not just with a pipe bow, but we would be slowly increasing the weight and the volume of your training, yeah. okay? By the end of that, you would have you would be up to kind of a, a reasonable position to be shooting very well at the end of that with good technique structure. And then we would start to focus more on the shot execution. 
okay, on the expansion, the release, the flow through, how to use the clicker, um, you know, how to how to aim, how to shoot in the wind. Like we we'll move on to that more advanced stuff, okay. Um, does that answer your question? Yes. 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 So yeah. First answer is, uh, it's not a function of time, it's a function of your effort, okay, and how much work you put into it. Um, so it could be six weeks, or it could be never, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so that's in you, that's not up to me, that's up to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, get it. And then the next part is, if you do follow the program, I think if you, yeah, sort of eight to 12 weeks would be a great time period to sort of say, right, here's my commitment to my technique structure, I'm gonna work on that. Then like I said already, if you just did that, I think you'd already be, in terms of technique, ahead of like 95% of archers that are there, okay? Um, because most people, like I said, they kind of gloss over that stage yeah. and then they spend the rest of their archer career chasing their tail. Yeah. That might be the next 10 years, okay? I yeah, haven't met you up to like, then, blindly. Oh, I'm flattered. <laughs> I'm flattered. Stop it, stop it. Okay. Never yet. Okay. Does that answer a question? Yes. Awesome. Yes. All right, well, time for our next drill. Okay. Um, okay, so the next thing I want to work on is the setting of the front shoulder. Yep. Okay. I want to make sure that it's properly set. Um, now, it is a lot better than when we first started, mm -hmm. but what I think is that when you're drawing, it's not it's not fully locked down. I don't think you're maintaining the tension pulling it down. Okay. okay? Yeah. Now, with this, it's very light. It's only like six pounds to hold it full draw, mm -hmm. so you can get away with it. But when you go up to shooting a full pound bow again, and you're shooting many, many arrows, you've got stabilizers on there and all that stuff, if your shoulder's not in the correct position, then you're gonna have a lot more tension through the through the front shoulder, through the yeah. delts and through the rotator cuff. And um, it's gonna to lead to getting fatigued mm -hmm. and therefore inconsistency. Okay. okay. So we really need to be fussy with getting that like loaded in. Sure. So let's go through the shot process again. Yep. Everything the same as normal. Okay. Go up to the race stage. Race. Boom. Okay, this is really good. Posture is good. Now here, shoulder down. Ah, okay, there we go. See how you actively pull it down? Mm -hmm. Now you go into pre draw. Okay, now in this position, you need to check to make sure it's set it down. Good. So you actively need to kind of pull the shoulder down and you're stabilizing through the pecs and through, uh, through the scapula to kind of hold it stabilized. Yeah. Does that make sense? Okay, so hold that position, chin up, and lose your posture. You got it, you got it. Yeah. Okay. Shoulder down. There you go. So now, it's not enough just to set that and forget about it. You need to set it and then maintain that tension as you then now switch your focus. Okay, now set the back scapula, elbow coming around, chin up, into anchor. Okay. Now here again. Shoulder down. See? So, what's happening is you're setting it right, but then as you move through the process, your focus is kind of shifting back here and you're not maintaining that tension. So this is the next thing to work on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hold that. Better, arm straight. Keep pushing. Good. And pre draw. And let down. Well done. So let's just check um, this rotation. Shoulder down. Good. Arm rotated. Yes, just relax, just relax. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm rotated. Mm -hmm. Good. And shoulder down. Yeah. Okay. okay. Continue to work on this. I know you haven't. Yes, I know you haven't had much time to work on those those drills against the wall. We'll continue to work on that. Okay, that does take work. Should I just use a band to train the supernator? Or the pronator? I forgot what the muscle is called. Yeah, the internal rotators. Yeah. Um, I think it's a bit more specific than that. I think the drill that I gave you against the wall yeah. is the one to do. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, because it's it's also a, it's also an isometric kind of hold. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, training internal rotators is great, but you need to do it as part of more of a balanced strength program. Yeah. We might get into that later down the track. For sure. But for now, I think we'll just focus on that. Yep. Because it's an isometric hold. It's a very specific position, mm -hmm. and we also need to work on the coordination of setting the shoulder down as well as rotating that front. So that's nothing new to you but you just need to keep working on those drills. Sure. Okay? Yep. All right, let's go again. So, good, chin up, looking at the target, good. Posture down, raising, and pre-drill. 
course. Make sure this is set. This is good. Now, loading. And elbow comes up into anchor. Good. Alignment is bang on. Posture and balance is pretty good. Front shoulder stabilized. Okay, now elbow this way. A little bit high, but that's okay. Okay, now I'm gonna give you the next thing to work on. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is the elbow height. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, when you're setting up, yeah. okay, we've talked about the loading stage where you set the shoulder down and back, mm -hmm. you pull the elbow around, yep. and you lift the elbow into anchor. Okay? okay. There is an optimal elbow height. Yes. Okay. Um, I've got an article about this on my website. Have you seen it? That's all right. You can go and do your homework later. Okay. I've got some pretty pictures there with angles drawn on it. Yep. Um, for those people watching at home, I can put a link somewhere in the description or wherever. You can go check it out. But basically, okay, um, a lot of archers I've seen have a perception that the elbow line Mm -hmm. should be an extension of the arrow. You make yes, sense? Yes, that's a mindset I had. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going Actually. to... So, you're wrong. <laughs> okay, dude, that's okay. Clearly. <laughs> but that's all right. That's, that's what I'm here for. Um, but what, I'm going to explain why. So, the line of the arrow would keep the elbow very low. Uh -huh. Right? I'm exaggerating so you can see, but yeah. that's the idea. Um, what you want to do is actually, instead of the line from the arrow, the arrow is not the pressure point. The pressure point is here into the grip. Uh -huh. What you want is to extrapolate a line from the pressure point into the grip through where the, where the hook is uh, on the string, through the center of your, your hook, say your middle finger, roughly, to the point of your elbow. And that means that the elbow is slightly above the arrow line. Okay, so go through your shot process. And we're just gonna give you some feedback on that elbow line. Pre draw, shoulders in line, check the posture. Good, okay, loading. Good, okay, now. From my eye, and we can do some video analysis later, your elbow is a touch high. Now what we're also seeing, if I can demonstrate, can I finish this off? Yeah, sure. Okay. What we're also seeing is kind of like a little kink in your wrist this way. Okay? So instead of, what we want to see is, like I said, the wrist should be fully relaxed, mm -hmm. and there's a straight line through here. Yeah. What I'm actually seeing is kind of like a little kink in your wrist this way. So you have a bit of tension, yep. and I think when I've said raise your elbow, you're kind of exaggerating that effect rather than using the scapular retractors to kind of set the shoulder down and back and then like pulling the elbow around in this plane I think you're actually trying to pull it up in this plane okay makes sense so there's a distinction between this mm -hmm. and oh, like okay. that yes makes sense okay so we're just going to we're not going to learn anything new. We're just going to focus on making sure we isolate the scapular retractors to get that elbow in the correct position. Okay. Let's try again. So step forward. Let me just um, let me just without the string, looking at the target. Mm -hmm. Okay. So see, this is relaxed. Yep. This is good. Let me just line your elbow. Okay. So this here would be a good elbow position, and this wrist will be straight. Okay. okay. Whereas not not okay. like this. Yeah. Okay. So hold your posture, everything. Yeah. Head, chin up. Yeah. Hold that position. Yeah. Feel that. Get comfortable with it. I'm going to be spending a lot of time here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is better. No. Looking at too hard. Good. Okay, now with the bow. <clears throat> I know it's not easy. I didn't say it was easy. Did I? No. no okay, good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Free draw. Boom. Good. Now, scapula down and around. Okay, now, don't pull the hand. 
just from pre-draw, just let the hand flow and focus on drawing with the elbow. That's better. Okay, now you've got a much more natural line through here. Your elbow position is correct. Okay, and you haven't got the tension in the wrist. See what I mean? I must know what I'm talking about or something. Then I said pull with the elbow and let the hand follow. Good job. Let down. Good. You happy with that? Yeah. Good. I felt like I could... Um, so from uh, half draw to full draw, I should continue rotating the... The scapula. Yeah, the scapula. Yes. Rather than pulling back. That's right. Yeah. So, um, again, just back to... So we've got we've gone and probably overanalyzed things, focusing on all right, well, wrist tension, all that. Really, the cue for you that you think you need, you need to remember: mm -hmm. draw from the elbow. Yeah. Let the hand follow. Yeah. Don't pull from the hand. Back to basics. Okay. Right, let's try it one more time. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty Make sure your shoulders are in line. Good. Now. From here, keep this relaxed. Draw from the elbow. Load. Anchor. Okay. A little bit better. Good job. Okay, let down. So, you're doing really, really well with these drills that I'm giving you. So, over this course of this week, we're going to start uh, cranking things up a little bit. The next stage of progression. Okay. You get some bands on here. So, these are the tan therabands. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're the lightest ones. They're about a three mil tube. Yeah. Okay. The reason why these are so valuable is because you can put these on your bow, and each one at full draw will add about two to three pounds to your draw weight. Okay. So, step one we take off all the draw weight. You're on a five pound bow. Mm -hmm. We just take off, we take away the weight, we learn the mobility. Yep. Okay, we, we screen motor control, and then we learn the basics of technique. Then you, through your, you've been working on the volume of your training, you've been doing your tech draws every day, you've been doing your SPT every day, you've been building out the volume of that, reinforcing that technique, reinforcing those neural pathways through volume training. Now, we start to increase the relative strength, okay, incrementally. And this is how we do it. So, here's three. So that's about nine pounds at a time. This will bring your, I uh, know, eight pound training bow up to about 18, 20 pounds, which is some light limbs, 18 pound limbs. Yeah, the beginner, the beginner, the beginner limbs you got. Yeah. Great. So, that's, that's the next progression. Okay. okay? Yeah. So, this week, what you're gonna start to do is you're going to add do the same drills, your tech drills and your SPT, with one band. Okay. Okay? Yeah. And that's going to give you a little bit of extra resistance with the bow. Yeah. We're going to check in midweek, see how you're going. We're going to do a test on your technique on Thursday, when I see you. Yeah. And then we're going to, all going well, progress again. Okay? okay? Yeah small increments at a time. Now this is a very light weight to start with, so you shouldn't have any problems with this, especially um, yourself. And then we're gonna to go to three bands, okay, which adds about another nine, 10 pounds to the bow. And then we um, progress up to the next set of light limbs, okay? Now we continue with these, and with your SPT, we'll continue to progressively increase your bow conditioning using this. So you might be shooting at say uh, 25 pounds, but you'll be doing SPT at 28, 31, 34, okay? And that's how we build up your bow fitness. So what a lot of people do is they will just, uh, all right, I've been shooting this poundage for a while, I'm a bit bored with that, let's crank that up. And they put a couple of turns on and they buy six pound heavier limbs, all right? And then they just Bloody. start to shoot it. And then their technique gets compromised because they can't, um, they haven't trained up with the weight first. Yes. We train up with the weight first with SPT drills and tech drills uh -huh. so that then by the time you're shooting it, the shooting feels easy. You've already done the hard work. Make sense? Yes. All right, so let's put a band on and see how we go. Okay. Good, pre-draw. Make sure your front shoulder's set. Good, keep that relaxed. 
Okay, now drawing from the elbow. Yes, much better. Keep pushing. Yes. Hold on. Looking good, mate. And pre draw. And let down. How does the weight feel with the one bander? Just right. Just right. Yeah. Perfect. Well, there you have it, guys. That's coaching case study number two. And we've spent a bit of time with Josh now going through those fundamentals and correcting it. In today's video, I think you'll find it quite valuable because um, we go through a few things that um, quite often are sticklers for a lot of beginners who are trying to refine that technique uh, structure. Now, I shouldn't just say beginners because quite a lot of this stuff uh, is recurring issues for even some quite advanced archers. And that's why the reason why we're so fussy with it at the beginning of someone's te uh, technique uh, structure, when they're learning that in the beginning of their archery career, because once you get it right, it's already, and you can reinforce it, then that's something that will continue through your archery career and it will be a leg up on your competition as you go through with that. So uh, I'm very, very biased towards being a perfectionist in the early days so that you don't have lingering issues that follow on in the future. So if you have learned something from this video, don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't already, and comment in the section below. Tell me what you've learned. Uh, tell me how it's helped you. Uh, tell me if you don't understand something because uh, I read all those comments and it's really, really good feedback for me to learn how to put this comment together so that it's the most valuable for my viewers, okay? Uh, if you've watched Coaching Case Study number one, Coaching Case Study number two, and you have learned anything, or even you haven't learned even a new way of, of doing a technique or perceiving that technique, then quite frankly, I deserve a dislike for, uh, not, for wasting your time and not teaching you anything. Uh, so leave me a dislike if that's you. Otherwise, um, do me a favor and leave a like, comment and subscribe. And uh, one more thing is in today's video, we talked about these tan TheraBands, okay? Now these are very, very valuable part of your training tool. Um, they're integral to my system of how to uh, sequentially increase the draw weight without compromising on technique. So I highly recommend that you go check these out. Um, they are a bit specialist, so you'll, you'll find them a bit difficult to get hold of from a lot of retailers, but I'll put a link in the description section below. Okay, that is an affiliate link, so I get like a 10% uh, kickback from that. Uh, it's a great way to support the channel if you have learned something, but um, um, yeah, very highly recommend that you go grab some of these. Uh, tie them into little loops, put them around your bow, and they're great for beginners in terms of incrementally increasing the draw weight, but also for advanced archers to, you know, you might be shooting at 45 pounds, but you can be doing SBT at 48, 51, 55 pounds by using these, and that is also a very, very relevant and valid training protocol. So, um, once again, guys, thanks again for joining me on the Rogue Archery TV YouTube channel. I hope to see you on the range.